Good afternoon. Yeah, so I'm here to, I'm CEO of and founder at Coachella Limited, uh, here to tell you about the Coachella story. Uh, so when you look at the evolution of technology in Africa, we had the internet, mobile phone, then around 2010 came the smartphone, allowing businesses to actually package their services in form of applications which could be downloaded onto users' phones. Uh, the Coachella story began around that time. We've been in operation for about uh, four years, uh, four great years, and uh, basically we set out to solve a specific need. Uh, what we realized was as much as there was a consumer shift from using feature phones to using smartphones, uh, not many companies were developing solutions for the smartphones. The few that were doing were not doing it right. Uh, so basically, we set out to answer the question, why is it that an app like Facebook has users running into millions, but the same users don't use solutions done on the African continent? Uh, so. We actually entered into banking and payments uh, around 2014. And uh, by that time, uh, some banks, some payment providers had launched their applications. But what was there in the market was nothing to, uh, to write home about. And I'm sure you've seen this. You download a banking app, a payments app, a landing app, and the first thing you see is a login screen. How do you get the login screen? Oh, you have to go to the banking hall. So you've already lost me as a customer. Or perhaps it's the second screen you go in, you see a list of services, one, two, three. You click on the first one, again, another list of services. So just putting the USSD experience onto an app. No wonder there was not much traction on these platforms because of taking a wrong approach. So what is the right approach? Uh, how can payment providers win in the digital space? You need to focus on the customer. Uh, Oftentimes, we focus on the product. Then we want the customer to fit into the product. Uh, as this picture shows, uh, customers will leave you. So instead of trying uh, to make the customer follow a particular pavement, why don't you allow the customer to cover up a path for himself, then you build along that path. Focus on the customer, then even your product can actually evolve to fit into the life of the customer. Uh, but then how do you focus on the customer? Uh, I'm sure at one time or another you've gone to a banking hall to do a withdrawal service. Why did you go there? Is it because you heard the bank has a superior withdrawal service? Or men, they have just redesigned their banking halls and they look superb, so I have to go there. No. Chances are you needed to pay rent. So how do you get cash to pay rent? You have to visit a bank branch. So the most important thing is you needed to fulfill a particular need, that is paying rent. And that is what is important. So if you look at this way, you actually find that all the products that exist there, lending, uh, mortgaging, payments, are there merely to fulfill customers' needs. Yeah. So take, for example, ta uh, Mary here. She's a single mom with three kids of school going age. Uh, uh, what concerns Mary? Is she thinking about SWIFT, RTGS, funds transfer? No. Mary is actually concerned about things to do with her life. So she's interested in how do I get to work faster? How do I take my kids to school? Oh, I need to buy. Uh, groceries and food for my household. Then on the weekend, I need to go out with my friends for a movie. Uh, then, oh, I need to secure my future. So I need, um, she's thinking about insurance, uh, things like uh, how she can get a better home, education. These are Mary's needs. So as a provider in this payment space, instead of focusing on your products, why don't you focus on Mary's needs? Why don't you leverage on your merchant uh, partnerships, use uh, Mary's payment history to actually build a product that fits into Mary's lifestyle? And when you do so, guess what? You have deeper relationship with the customer, uh, you have uh, better loyalty from the customer, and the volume of transactions actually grow. Uh, that is the approach that we take. It's 
taking a user-centered approach, which is focused not on the products, but rather on the user. Uh, maybe it's a mouthful. Let's bring it closer home. Uh, so we do have many solutions, uh, apps, uh, web applications, yeah. We have the full suite of payment uh, solutions. I'll focus on what we did for one of the biggest banks in East Africa uh, called KCB Bank. So we are actually their partner. Uh, we did for them the KCB mobile banking app. Now, uh, if you look at Mary that we are talking about, Mary downloaded the KCB app and now she's able to pay rent, to pay school fees. Yeah, when she goes to a supermarket, she can be able to scan uh, to pay using M-Visa or MasterCard. Uh, she's reminded of her bills that are due. Mary was planning for a trip to Dubai. She's able to get reminders that, oh, you need to save for that trip. Yeah, Mary comes to Santon, she's at the convention center. She doesn't know where she can get food. So the app is able to pick her location, then pro recommend nearby places whereby she can be able to do so. Then there's an aspect of budget and expense tracking. So as a result, when we approached KCB in 2014, uh, the biggest uh, banking app had less than 10,000 users. Uh, right now, as we speak, KCB has users running into almost a million users. It's the number one banking app in East and Central Africa. And uh, from their financial reports, uh, transactions outside the mobile channel were actually, uh, outside the banking halls, were almost 73%. Uh, Interesting stuff. So that's what we do. Uh, so the user is on one hand. We work with banks, telcos. So like right now, there's something we are doing for Safaricom, uh, uh, who are the creators of M-Pesa. Then MFIs, SACOs, to actually put the pieces together to deliver convenience to the user. Our story began in Kenya. Uh, then within a very short time, we moved into five countries uh, in Eastern Africa, that's uh, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, and uh, Burundi. And now we are looking uh, to going to the larger, to other countries within Africa. Uh, thank you. Time up, thank you. <laughs> we'll be taking questions from the judging panel. Hey, thanks very much for that. Um, Quick question, yeah. for your product uh, and working with KCB, what's your revenue model? Are you per transaction based or are you a dev shop? And uh, <coughs> depending on those, obviously your competitors are different. So if you're a per transaction based, you're yeah. looking at guys like Sally Lint, et cetera, how do you differentiate versus them? Or if you're a dev shop, how do you ver differentiate versus kind of offshore dev, yeah. which tends to be cheaper, quicker? Yeah, so actually, so when we set out, uh, uh, it was essentially it was, there's a setup fee, then there's an annual uh, man maintenance fee. Uh, but our model is kind of diverse. So some clients, we, we, we take that model. Uh, then for some clients, we actually go for now revenue share, where we actually share revenue on per transaction. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we so when we started out, we started out by doing it for the likes of KCB. Uh, but now the way we are pivoting our business is whereby we are not just a B2B house, but we also have our own solutions uh, that we take to consumers. And most of the players in the banking, uh, be it banks, MNOs, MVisa, MasterCard, they are actually playing more of partnership role uh, within our ecosystem. Then in terms of uh, differentiating ourselves, uh, so. We actually, we play in the payment space, but what we actually saw that many people are obsessed with uh, payments, uh, especially with, with, with payments, and many African countries have done so. So what we wanted to do is to go the extra mile. So fine, I've paid my rent. It doesn't stop there. Is it possible to actually remind me when I need to pay rent? Is it possible to actually give notification to the landlord that so and so has paid rent? So it's actually going the extra mile, which not many people are doing. Yeah. Thanks for the pitch. Um, in terms of scalability, yeah. I understand the plan is to get into different countries. But yeah. What's the, have you looked at the dynamics of the different countries and what's the, what, 
what's your view on the, the countries that you want to get into and what form of what type of research have you done yeah. to make sure that you can be able to penetrate the markets as you have in East Africa? Yeah. Because there's different dynamics in different countries and some countries are more developed and less formal, yeah. more formal than the other countries. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so like um, uh, we, so like Kenya mo uh, mostly, uh, most people are, are on mobile. Uh, so for that market, uh, with MNOs like M-Pesa, uh, then MTN, so it's, it's more of a mobile economy. Uh, in some regions like uh, South Africa, what we actually found out is that it's more of a card, a, ca a card, a card, where, yeah, so people are used to, to swiping with the card. Yeah, so we've, we've, we've done a bit of research. That's why in our bouquet of services, so like uh, while in countries like Kenya, we focus on now working with the likes of M-Pesa. Now, in a market like South Africa, uh, we are thinking of taking advantages of things like M-Visa, Masterpass, uh, which actually enables one, now instead of your mobile phone becoming your wallet, uh, your card actually becomes your wallet. It's only that now the card isn't a physical card, but you can actually load it uh, within an application. Uh, now, because also we play in the app space, so when you're doing uh, USSD and SMS, uh, you kind of have to connect to the various MNOs. But now, if you're doing for app, the same model that has worked for Kenya can be easily replicated because in each of these markets, the cost of the smartphone is becoming cheaper and cheaper. And therefore, if you actually uh, do nice experiences around that, uh, the cost of going into that market is, is low. I mean, your various models, who owns the customer and the customer data, and what freedom do you have to um, build products and services over and above the kind of core platform product that you're providing? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, for, so for our own products, we, we own all that. Uh, but now working with banks, and um, uh, especially like uh, KCB is the largest bank in East Africa, we are also working with some other banks within that region. Uh, they will want to own the data. So what actually happens is that they own the data, but actually we've deployed tools what, which can be able to do things like predictive analysis on that data to actually really improve the experience for, for the customer. Now, the clients that we've worked with, uh, uh, usually we tell them to take a different approach from what other people are doing. Uh, so meaning that over and about providing the basic core banking functionalities. Uh, so like, uh, for instance, the banks we've rolled out within Kenya, instead of the app just having the banking stuff, uh, so you, the app has things like stock analysis, uh, like things like uh, business insights, uh, then deals, offers. So this is not your usual banking stuff, yeah, but now, uh, it's important if you're trying to put the customer at the center so that the customer knows that I'm not just going here to do banking, but even other aspects of my life, uh, this platform can help me manage. Yeah. Thank you, judges. Thank you very much, Abel. Thank you. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.